guys, my name's Chloe, otherwise known as Princess Aspian, and welcome to my channel. So in the past, I've spoken before about my issues with sleeping and how I have really, really, really bad insomnia. I have literally tried every single thing that I can possibly think of to help me get to sleep and none of it works, literally none of it. I, I can't do it. I've tried every relaxation technique, I've tried every wives tale, but nothing at all has ever gotten me to sleep, like literally nothing. And it's it just, it's, it's not fun, it's not good for anyone. It's not good for me, it's not good for my family because then in the morning I'm cranky and I'm upset and just it's no, no one is having a good time. I have my sleepy tea and I have my weighted blankets and they do help a lot and I cannot recommend weighted blankets enough they have helped me so, so, so much and they help me to calm down and relax. And while they do the calming and relaxing part really good, I just, I still just, it just, sleeping just doesn't work. I, I feel like I was born a nocturnal, uh, except that doesn't work either because I don't sleep during the day anyway. So I just was born, what's an animal that doesn't sleep? A plant? A robot. I was, I was, I was born Astro Boy. There we go. <laughs> Basically, I have almost been at the stage of begging someone to hit me over the head with a hammer just so I could get a couple of hours of sleeping. They haven't, no one's done it, uh, unfortunately, but uh, I have a better solution and we're gonna talk about that now. <laughs> so I've never been able to sleep. We've come to that conclusion, but it's taken me a really, really long time to figure out why. And I think I've finally come to the reasoning. Okay, so I'm not a doctor, I'm not a sleep expert. I don't know if they exist, but I'm certainly not one. I am the opposite of a sleep expert. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a pediatrician, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a sleepy person. However, I have come up with a fairly decent understanding about how my mind works and a fairly decent understanding of how other autistic people's minds work. So I have come to a bit of a conclusion as to why myself and about 80% of other autistic people struggle so much with sleeping to the point where it's classified as actual insomnia. And I think I have solved the world's problems as to why we are all so tired but can never be able to sleep. Here's the thing, fear, and overexposure. It sounds bizarre. I know it sounds bizarre. How can you be scared and overexposed inside of your own house, inside of your own bedroom, inside of your own bed? It doesn't work like that, but it does, and here's why. The thing is, our minds are always active. Our minds are always active, and they're always thinking, and they're always worrying. That's that's <laughs> that's kind of the unfortunate thing. We, we have a lot of worries. We, we worry a lot about things that uh, most of the people don't and most of the people don't even think about worrying about and they're the things that worry us more than anything One of our biggest worries is other people, which is kind of sad, isn't it? We're constantly in fear. We are constantly worried and it might even be subconscious What if someone comes in? What if this happens? What if that happens? The thing is my mind is always in overload thinking about other people which sounds quite bizarre But stay with me on this one. And it seems to subconsciously do so even when I'm in fact, not surrounded by any people at all. <laughs> and not only is it other people that we're all worrying about consistently, but our brains are constantly, consistently processing everything, every millisecond of the day, and it is exhausting. We're not just processing things like you guys process things. If neurotypical people are seeing the tip of the iceberg, we got the whole bottom part that's surrounded by water with that you can't see that's what we're feeling and processing so it's exhausting and it's tough and it's really hard and when we're doing all of this while we're awake and it's a lot how can you expect us all to just turn it off so we can sleep it doesn't work like that i always say that autism is a superpower but that is one superpower that i don't think any bite from any radioactive spider will ever give me the ability of i may not be a doctor or a psychologist or a sleep expert by any means but I think I've come up with a pretty good solution. A couple of months ago, I was watching The Good Doctor, which is an incredible, amazing series about an autistic doctor. Uh, definitely watch it, it's amazing. It's the only show that I have ever seen which accurately represents a person with autism. The character in the show, he sleeps on a mattress on the floor and it's not because he can't afford a bed, it's not because he doesn't want a bed. Like, he's a, he's a doctor, he can afford a bed if he wants one. He can afford it, like, a, a fairly decent bed if he wants one, but he doesn't want one. And I was watching this show and I was like, oh. And so, I don't know what it was, but something just peaked inside of me. Something was like, ding, that's it. That's that's what you're missing out on. I never even considered this because I never thought of of a of, of a different way around things. I always thought that you know this is how this is how you do things and this is how you sleep and and that's that's the way the world works. But it doesn't, and you don't have to do what other people do. You can do what makes you happy, and you can do what makes you feel good, and you can do what works for you. And this is what works for me. I moved my mattress to the floor without a bed frame, 
in the very corner of my bedroom, the furthest spots away from the doors and the windows and anything like that. It's like a little nook, like a little nest, like a little cocoon, and I feel safe in it and secure in it. It's safe. It's it's a safe space. So it worked for a bit, but it just obviously wasn't exactly what I needed. It's similar, I guess, to how a bee's hive is all closed in except like one tiny hole or how birds have like their big nests and they just feel safe and cozy in it. We kind of need the same sort of thing. I think I've come up with a pretty good solution that I don't think anyone else has come up with. Although, I didn't actually really come up with it all by myself because kids have been doing this exact same thing for ages. Since since the dawn of time, I presume. I'm like There's probably... There's probably a paragraph in the Bible about like Adam and Eve doing this. I don't know. <laughs> when you were a kid, when you wanted to get away from the world, when you wanted to be in your safe, tiny little space, all by yourself, feeling all cozy and in your own little universe, what did you do? Make a blanket for it? So, why wouldn't I do the exact same thing? So, I give to you how to make your very own Century Oasis blanket fort. Let's go. So, to start my very own blanket fort, my incredible dad built me a wooden base that's been nailed to the four corners of my bed. This is perfect for a permanent solution, but if you're not ready or you don't have the ability to do something that permanent, you're able to buy pop-up bed tents online or in most large retailers. This next part is entirely optional. I mean, the whole thing is optional. No one is forcing you to make a fort in the first place. But I bought a few meters of fairy lights from Bunnings and strung it around the wooden base. Calming lighting is such an important sensory tool and can create such a beautiful atmosphere to fall asleep to, especially if you're afraid of the dark or don't like being complete sensory drops such as myself. Just make sure that your lights aren't the type that will heat up quickly and are safe to be around fabric. You can choose any color. Originally, I had really brightly colored lights, which you can see in my One Direction Bed Fort karaoke video. However, these just didn't work very well for me when I was trying to sleep because they keep changing colors and there was too many of them and it was really, really bright. So I have these ones and they are just a soft yellow color light and they don't produce a lot of light, but they just have a really beautiful feel to them. Now comes the fort part, making the cave, the nest, the beehive. The entire idea behind the fort is for it to be your safe place, your little haven. So you want to avoid bright, bold colours that are overstimulating, such as bright yellows, oranges, hot pinks and reds. Instead, natural or calming colours such as baby colours or natural colours such as greens, blues and browns are a better choice. I finally came to the choice of this sloth pattern fabric. Ironic, isn't it? Or perhaps I'm just trying to spark it into action. <laughs> This is where the fun part comes in. Filling your little cave with all of your snuggly, cuddly things that you can find. Everyone is different and everyone's going to like the little nest set up in a different way. And while I love regulation and neatness around this sort of thing, I actually love having a mess of pillows and blankets and teddy bears. It makes my little fort just feel that much more cozy and safe. I start with making my bed normally, so there's at least some element of neatness to it all. Before I pile it all up in fluffy blankets and pillows and teddy bears that I possibly can, the more the better. that forts are only for kids anyway. So, I now sleep in a blanket fort every single night. How cool is that? It makes me excited about going to sleep. watching this video I am gonna go and sleep in my blanket fort now um, and actually sleep because I actually sleep in this blanket fort and it actually helps me <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys again soon bye